That is what we call pyrimidine. An isomer of diazine that has the nitrogen atoms in one three position. Now, at this base level, we go detail in the biochemistry of these bases we are calling. First, when we say pyrimidines, what are actually pyrimidines? What are actually pyrimidines? We will see pyrimidine and see purines. What are pyrimidines? In organic chemistry, actually a pyrimidine is one of the isomers of the diazine or the azine or the azine. Diazine. Pyrimidine is one of the isomers of diazine. What is diazine? A diazine is a heterocyclic organic compound that is made up of six members. Six membered heterocyclic organic compound. Six membered heterocyclic organic compound. Six membered heterocyclic organic compound. Why I say heterocyclic is that it has different atoms in the chain. Unlike benzene, benzene is homocyclic because within the ring of benzene is only carbon atoms. But when you come to the ring of the, uh, the azine, the azine is heterocyclic in the sense that any heterocyclic organic compound that is made up of six, that are six membered heterocyclic organic compound, six membered ring containing two nitrogen atoms and four carbon atoms. That's what we call diazine. Diazine or diazine. Diazine is six-member heterocyclic ring of organic compound that is made up of two nitrogen atoms and four carbon atoms. Now, the other isomers are this. The nitrogen, what matters is that there are four carbons. So the nitrogen, the position of the nitrogen now classifies the, type of the, the types of diazine we have. So in each of these, the two nitrogen can occur like this. You can have N here, and have N here, such that all these ones now are carbons. Or rather, the N can be separated by one carbon, then after nitrogen, you have carbon, then after the carbon, you have nitrogen, then other ones become carbon. Remember, the azine is, is just a heterocyclic ring of six members where you have four carbons and two nitrogen. Another form that it can occur is the nitrogen can occur like this and be separated by two carbon atoms, no longer one. Another nitrogen occurs carbon. So these are the three forms of it. Just like we know in organic chemistry, this is a kind of auto position, meta position, and a, a para position. Like this one now, the first end is given one. So this is one, two, three, four. Five, six. So in this case, it is one, two position. In one, two position, I think you just call it a pyridazine. Pyrid, this is one isomer. So one, two diazine, or one, two diazine is called pyridazine. Pyridazine. Then if you come here, it is carbon one. I mean, sorry, not carbon. This is actually number one member, two, three. Four. Start from any nitrogen. Even if you start here, one, two, three, four. It is still one, two. It can be here, one. This is member two, member three, member four, five, and six. In this case, you have that the nitrogen has occurred at number one and three. So when it is one, three, diazine, that's what we call pure pyrimidine. Simple pyrimidine. So what is a pyrimidine? Pyrimidine is simply an isomer of diazine that has the nitrogen atoms in one three position. That is what we call pyrimidine, a diazine that has the nitrogen atoms in one three position. But when it is in one, you can call it pyridazine. Then this one is another form. Uh, this is pyri, I think pyrazine or so. This is in one four position. You don't call it pyrimidine. So which means this is where our interest is. This particular structure what is what is referred to as pyrimidine. Now, the bases are actually the derivatives of this compound. 
when nitrogen is in one three position in the diazine, you call it pyrimidine. So let's see now the different modifications. Whatever you will now know is that there must be two nitrogen in either side to say thiamine and uh, uracil. But what is constant is that there will be the one three position. Whether it is like this, remember if nitrogen is here and it's here, it is still in one three. That means one, two, three. See what I mean? Remember your numbering, you can go there and learn how to name benzene derivatives here in this channel to help you understand. Let's assume the N is here and the N is here. This is still a pyrimidine because it's in one three. Just when it's separated by one edge in one side, like you can see, this is the edge. This is another form of itself. It can occur in different forms. You can decide to put the end here. Then jump this and put this is still in one thread. This is still pyrimidine. So that's it. Remember, you don't need to put circle because it's not this now. The next one is uracil. Uracil and uh, thiamine is just the same thing, only that the methyl group is removed. So you can say that uracil is demethylated thiamine. Uracil means demethylated thiamine. That is thiamine that you have removed the methyl group at carbon, at carbon or at position 5. At carbon number 5, of course. So what we have now is we will just repeat this structure exactly and remove this methyl group here. So we still have double bond group. We have NH. NH. Double bond group. And uh, has just it. So, in the other words, you can now say that this is nothing but 1,3-H pyrimidine 2,4-diome. Some calls thiamine demethylated uracil. Some calls thiamine, sorry, some call thiamine methylated uracil. Simple. Methylated uracil. Now, as you have said, that methyl group is added. You see, the only difference here is that there is no methyl group. So, some call this one demethylated thiamine. Demethylated thiamine, which is equal to uracil. So, we have seen the purines now. Sorry, we have seen the pyrimidines and their, conf their conformations. Let us see the purines. So, we have three forms of pyrimidine. We have cytosine, thiamine, and uh, uracil. There are other forms, but we are talking about the ones commonly found in the nucleus. That's among the nucleic uh, acid. So the purines actually purines are actually two two ring. That's two cyclic. Uh, they are actually dicyclic. They have two cyclic uh, compound. Where we have one is six sided and the other is five sided. It's just like the two purines we are talking about is going to be, depends on how you want to draw it, to first of all draw exactly the six sides we have here, then draw the five sided one. So this is the structure of purines, whether it is adenine or guanine. This is the way purines occur. And we have how many sides? One, two, three, four, five, six. For this, then it's one, two, three, four, five. So five-sided ring and six-sided ring joined together forms purine. Then in conventional numbering, here it takes usually one, two, three, four, five. So here it's usually carbon number. One, two, not carbon, please. Position. Position one, two, three, four, five, and six. This usually takes the position. So this is position one, position two, position three, position four, position five, position six, position seven, eight, and nine for purines. That's the conventional way of positioning it. Then one should know that for purines, at position one and three, and position seven and nine, is made up of nitrogen. So purines actually have four nitrogens in the double ring. While pyrimidines have two nitrogen. So at, at the position one, there must be nitrogen there. And this is the conventional way of numbering it one, two, three, four, five, six, and then seven, eight, nine. So we have nine members here. And what must be in the position one and three 
is nitrogen atom. So we change this to nitrogen. Here is nitrogen. Then position seven and nine is also nitrogen. Other ones are actually carbon. So this is the basics for drawing what we call the purines and the pyrimidine. So then the modifications, the modifications of uh, the, 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 the derivatives of this gives the, either the adenine or the guanine. So coming to the guanine, for this to be modified to guanine, what it has to do is just that. At carbon number six now, let me repeat the structure. At carbon number six, here there should be an amino group for that carbon number six. Then here remains the nitrogen. The nitrogen, I think there should be H, there should be three H there. I can't remember vividly. But this particular thing is a distinguishing feature for guanine. Then if it is, okay, sorry, not guanine, please, add the nine, add the nine. For adenine, the sixth position is having an amino group. So by name you can say six amino. But the guanine or guanine at the sixth position, there is a double bond to the sixth position. The six-sided one is usually bigger conventionally. The, the remarkable thing is just this. As you can see, that's position six. Usually have double bond. Oh, this is for guanine, but this will have an amino group. There may be other amino, and again, that's nine is usually H. You have, it has nine H. That's why they mean it. If you see nine H, it means the hydrogen is attached to the nitrogen number nine. Because the position one, three, seven, and nine is what have nitrogen. So when you have seven H, it means that hydrogen is attached to the nitrogen at the position 7. If you have 1 H, it shows that nitrogen is attached to position. Nitrogen is You can't have 2 H here because no purine will have nitrogen at position number 2. So that's it. Now, so for this one, the other 9 is actually having 1 H and 9 H. 1 H and 9 H. H, meaning there is hydrogen attached to the nitrogen in the position 1 and position 9. But guanine have only but 9 H, but also have a kind of amino group in the that's NH2 at the position number 2. So these are the distinguishing features. Now, when we combine the pentose sugar together with this basis, there is a rule in the base pairing. Watch this before I gain. This base is paired up. In pairing of bases, what I mean is, if we have something like this, In best pairings, let's assume we have something like this. For each one, there should be a phosphate group. Breaking this one from the other. So in this case, we have, as I told you earlier, these are the bases. Here is what we call pairing. And this bond is actually hydrogen bond, holding one base to another. As we have seen pyrimidines and purines, this side. One purine pairs with one pyrimidine. One purine pairs with one pyrimidine. And they pair in this way. Add the nine pairs with thiamine. Add the nine pairs with thiamine. Whereas guanine pairs with a cytosine. Which means if you come here, add the nine pairs with cytosine, then, sorry. Guanine pays with cytosine. Guanine pays with cytosine. Adenine pays with thiamine. So if you come here and write T, here must automatically be A because thiamine pays with adenine. 
Then if you come here and write C, here will automatically be G. Then if you come here and write A, here will automatically be T. If you have A here, there will be T here. So if you go down again, where we have another base, let's assume here becomes now G. Here is automatically C. So if they ask you in exam, for example, ask that question, a DNA strand that have T, this is a strand. And that's why I told DNA is double stranded. This is first strand, this is the second strand. They're like that are joined together. So if the DNA strand have T, C, A, the complementary, that's the half that will come and complete it must be A, G, T. Because of the fact that adenine pays with time, right? And go and E pays with cytosine. So do cytosine pay with go and E. So here that we have seen G, it will also be C. So if they tell you a base, if the base strand, or if, if, the, if the base sequence of DNA strand, a strand, that's half of it, is A, G, T, C. This complementary base must be T, C, A, G. That means, simple, A, G, T, C. A and T interchange. G and C go together. Anywhere you see C, you put G. Anywhere you see G, you put C. Anywhere you see T, you put A. Anywhere you see A, you put T. Which means if I have T here, here will be A. If I have A here, here will be T. And if I have G here, here will be C. If I have another G here, here will also be C. If I have another A here, here will be T. That is what we call base pairing. One guanine, sorry, one purine pairs with one pyrimidine. So it's wrong to write two pyrimidines. Let's say you have GA. Guanine cannot pair with adenine. It's wrong because there are two purines. And guanine don't pay with thiamine. So that is the rule for base pairing in the nitrogenous base, which forms the interior of the carbon. Then we should now link up this. So in next time I will now teach you further on this biochemistry of nucleic acids, please. On how these phosphodiester bonds are formed. It's formed between the upper number three carbon in the upper nucleotide then with the number five carbon in the lower nucleotide, the phosphate group exists between number three here and number five here, number three here, number five. In our next video, you will see what I mean. Then, the particular joining, the carbon one in the pentose sugar links with the nitrogenous basis in the interior. The carbon number one links with the nitrogens here, whereas that of carbon number three and five forms the phosphodiester bond. Then the bond between thiamine and adenine here is Hydrogen bond, hydrogen bond, but the bond holding each nucleotide is called actually a phosphodiester bond. You have what we call glucosidic bond, you find out. Then we watch out for the next video where we'll give this in details before we go to the processes of protein synthesis. Remember that the repeating units that build up nucleic acid are actually nucleotide. Then for your own assignment, find out what is called nucleoside. 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 What I discussed today is nucleotide. Then on your own, try and find out what nucleosides are. Nice to know that you're there. Stay subscribed for I have more things to give to you. Your questions is my topmost priority because I'll be here to attend to you. Remember, I can also like stream for you privately or your group. Anywhere you are in your school, I will give this biochemistry in details. God bless you and remain majestic.